Welcome to Install 103, Assemble and Install Universal Rail Kits. The building block videos are targeted at NetApp and partner engineers, as well as do-it-yourself customers. Always consult the most recent documentation before starting any work. In this video, we go over assembling and installing NetApp's Universal Rail Kits for third-party cabinets. This photo shows how the back of rail kit should look installed in a full-size third-party cabinet. When given a choice of screw size to use, defer to whatever size the customer currently uses. However, the M6 is preferred due to its robust size. A rack unit, or U, is three mounting holes high. In this photo, each rack unit is the three holes between the horizontal lines. The number is next to the middle hole. And a common mistake made by new field engineers is to install rail kits at the number instead of the bottom hole. Not all cabinets number the rack unit, so it's a good idea to have a paint marker or a sharpie to mark off each rack unit. Universal rail kits come in pairs, a left side and a right side. And the way to determine which is left side and right side, front and back, is the front always has the ledge where the rear has the slider. When installing the cage nuts, always keep a thumb on the slider or it will slide out and hit your feet and that hurts. The rail kits come with a little tool that you can use to insert cage nuts but in many cases you can actually insert the cage nuts by hand and on the front we put one in the top leave a gap and then two on the bottom and then you can see in the back where the slider is We've inserted one in the top and one in the bottom. The first set of rails is the most important because they determine how well everything else fits into the cabinet. Best practice is to build the cabinet from the bottom up. Our first component will be a disc shelf that is three rack units high. Storage controllers ship with a template to help you determine where to install cage nuts into the cabinet rails that the components are fastened to. The lower cage nuts are in the rail kit, so we move with the template to the first arrow for a 3U component. Now we place the rail kits so they fit between the rails rather than outside the rails. Placing them outside the rails consumes a few millimeters of space, which is enough to make sliding components in very difficult. Insert a screw into the bottom and top cage nuts, leaving the center cage nut free for securing the shelf or controller. Whether you use a manual or electric screwdriver, only make the screws hand tight. Someday you may need to remove the screws, and if they are too tight, you could strip the heads. At the rear of the cabinet, due to the orientation of the power distribution units, we had to plug in and label our power cables first, because they will be hard to get to after we install the components.
And before we fasten the rails, we take the opportunity to do some cable management and place the power cables behind the rail kits. The back end of the rail kit is where mistakes most often occur by fastening the one hole too high or too low, so we use a bubble or spirit level to ensure the rail kit is level before tightening the screws. Then we check the rail with the level again. And repeat the process on the other rail kit. The next video you should watch is Install 104, where we demonstrate how to rack and stack storage controllers and disk shells onto the rail kits you assembled.